So, if Melissa takes uh, junk food on a daily basis, eventually you will see my skin reflecting on the junk I've been taking. You will see my body itself reflecting the junk I've been taking. But if I eat healthy, uh, it will also come up in my skin, in the structure of my body, it will come out the way I look, even with the hair I grow, <laughs> it will come out with, with, with that, because all of those things will be looking healthy. Yeah, but you know most of the time we actually live in town, eating chips, fried chicken, cheese, you know, sausages, those junk, junk, we call it junk, <laughs> but for most people that is self-care. Yeah. They feel like this is my moment. I'm taking yeah. care of myself. I'm taking a soda. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're not understanding what exactly is, is self-care means that you sh it should be a long-term thing. What will you look, at? What will you look like long-term things apart from the normal junk food that you're taking around? So what do you advise such people? So allow me to invite our beautiful guest. To me here is a psychologist and she's going to tell us where she's coming from and what she does. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Melissa Shimisia. I'm a psychologist by profession and uh, currently I'm working in the uh, county, not a uh, county government but the county itself offering the uh, people around psychological care, among other things. Pleasure to you. Pleasure to you too. Thank you. Welcome to the show. So, today we are talking about self-care. When somebody thinks about self-care, what should come into mind? I think the words uh, are already a giveaway of what it means. It means basically taking care of yourself or uh, giving yourself the things you feel you need. Uh, I like looking at self-care in the aspects of a human being and breaking it down to what makes up a human being. Yeah. And uh, we are spiritual creatures, yeah. so the spiritual aspect comes into play when you're talking about self-care. Mm -hmm. We have the physical aspect of a human being that comes in again. Yeah. Uh, we have the emotional or psychological aspect mm -hmm. of the human being mm -hmm. and also we have the uh, what am I forgetting? Emotional, physical, mental. There's one more that I'm forgetting. Uh, but I think it's emotional, was, uh, physical, mental, mind. Which one? Oh, the social aspect. Social aspect. <laughs> <laughs> the social aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So those are the four parts that make up a complete human being mm. and if any of these parts is not uh, it, it, they, are, they are not catered for you'll find the mental health of a person becomes affected okay so i can say self-care is sort of a, a preventive measure for mental illness mm. we can look at it as a way of helping someone or help, helping an individual to ensure that their mental health is at par yeah. it also comes in as a treatment Mm -hmm. for mental illness mm -hmm. because uh, with most mental illnesses you find that the patient or the person who is sick is unable to do the basic self-care routines yeah. that uh, we are going to speak about mm -hmm. uh, for example someone who is depressed might not might have issues with appetite mm -hmm. so they will not eat right mm -hmm. or they could have uh, they could be feeding on fatty things or Sugar fried things. sugary things because that is the, their comfort food. They need to feel good. So uh, self care there becomes a minus for them. Yeah. Wow. So now let's look at it. Let us let us break it down. When you talk of physical self care, what do you mean by that? So physical self care is taking care of the shell that you've been given as a body. Because our bodies are shell that carry the rest of us, the emotional part and the, the spiritual part of our human being. Uh, so it carries our mind and our soul. And uh, when you take care of your physical body, there's so much that comes into play because 
there's what goes into the body which is in form of food yeah and then there is how do you now work the body so that it can be at its optimal yeah, yeah, yeah. so the physical exercise is what you need to do uh, physically I, I can talk about um, the nutritional part of, of self-care yeah. as someone eating right mm. someone exercising the right diet mm. and avoiding uh, things such as alcohol things as uh, frequent taking of fast foods because consistency when it comes to the nutrition will reflect eventually on how you look mm. so if melissa takes uh, junk food on a daily basis eventually you will see my skin reflecting on the junk I've been taking. You will see my body itself reflecting the junk I've been taking. But if I eat healthy, uh, it will also come up in my skin, in the structure of my body. It will come out with the way I look, even with the hair I grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will come out with, with, with that. Because all of those things will be looking healthy. Yeah, but you know, most of the time we actually relate our uh, eating chips, but chicken, cheese, you know, sausages, those junk, junk, we call it junk, <laughs> but for most people that is self-care. Yeah. They feel like this is my moment, I'm taking yeah. care of myself, I'm taking a soda. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. they're not understanding what exactly is, is self-care means that you sh it should be a long-term thing. What will you look at? What will you look like long-term? Yes. Apart from the normal junk food that you're taking. Around. So what do you advise such people? Uh, Self-care is about consistency. So when you say that you are taking junk food consistently, mm -hmm. the results will not be self-care results. Mm -hmm. When you take care of your body, you feed it with what is good, what is right, you try and mix up uh, if it is protein, carbohydrates, uh, and um, vegetables, you mix it all up in the right portion because there are actually right portions for you to take for your meal to be considered healthy. Okay. You ensure your healthy intake of water, eight glasses in a day. That one ensures that your body stays and serves you the way it should. For some of us, you find your body is 80 years old when you are 30 years old because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the way you've been taking care of your body has not been right. Yeah. So I can say junk food once in a while, mm. yeah, you, 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 can, you can use it as a break from your normal routine. Mm. But when it is regular, mm. it breaks the yeah. Wow. Now, when we talk of social uh, aspects as a self, yeah, mm. what are we talking about? Uh, we are talking about a human being being a social being. Mm -hmm. No person is an idol. Yeah. And for you to be a complete human, you need to relate with other people and engage with other people in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So you need to have the capacity to hold relationships, to maintain relationships with people, and to build new relationships. Mm -hmm. When a human being is able to do that, we can say socially they are complete mm -hmm. because uh, in different stages of our life mm -hmm. we lose some relationships and we are required to create new ones. Yeah. But a human being who uh, is frustrated when engaging with other people and feels like they will be more comfortable withdrawn and alone, mm -hmm. we usually question a well, mm -hmm. because uh, most mental illnesses you will find there is withdrawal from people. Uh, a good case is depression. Most people who are depressed don't want to be around people, they want to be alone. A good case is uh, something like psychosis. In, in our society, we call it madness. Okay. So, with psychosis, that person is not able to maintain relationships with other people because they are not in their right state. To, uh, to engage with others, mm. that person is practically in their own life. Mm. So a mentally well person, they are able to maintain relationships and create new relationships. 
Now, what happens to this person they call an introvert? Mm -hmm. uh, an introvert is a unique person. Mm -hmm. And recently we've been having people discovering there's a combination. Mm -hmm. We have ambiverts, mm -hmm. ambiverts, we have introverted extroverts, extroverted mm -hmm. introverts. Yeah. So I believe that everyone is a coptic. Mm -hmm. You can be an introvert, but there are definitely people who you are comfortable being around. What happens with an introvert is not that they are not able to engage socially but rather their social batteries are very short term. Mm -hmm. So if a normal person ha works with 5,000 amperes of battery, oh, battery. <laughs> for a, a, an introvert, they can work with 2,000. So an introvert will interact with other people, but they get tired easily. Yeah, <laughs> they get socially tired. So they feel like they can withdraw and be by themselves for, for some time. And in the period that they are alone, they are there alone, it's like they each other. So they have enough energy to talk with other people, but for a fraction of time. And uh, some introverts have favorite people that they can engage with for long periods of time. So these are people who have learned them and who they are and sort of respect. They feel comfortable. They feel comfortable around them. So it's like the introvert feels yeah, I can, I can interact, with, interact this. with this person for long periods of time and I'm Yeah, and I think I can relate with that because I'm <laughs> one of them. I really get tired in a social place and I don't want to talk too much. Sometimes, in fact, if it, if it takes me too much, I kind of like, I'm feeling like you're not boring. Me. You know, the way you, you think myself, I'm like, yeah, he's, you're not boring me. You're not boring me. <laughs> I want to just go to myself. Uh -huh. But the moment we get along with you, we can talk a lot. Yeah. And I'm feeling comfortable. Yeah. So I relate with that. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to these guys who are now on social media? We have the current trending TikTok something that is talking about Hello, Kababa. Mm -hmm. How are you today? <laughs> uh -huh. What do you think about it? What exactly is it? Uh, because we are seeing more men willing to. To, to socialize in that, yeah. they're really interested, yeah. they're getting excited about it. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. So, uh, I feel like it's a, it's, a, it's a way of connecting emotionally and being appreciated of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have someone who speaks to you in a soft voice and they're kind to you, they're considerate and they're checking in on your day, it's Feels nice. Yeah, it feels nice. <laughs> so I think uh, for for men, most men are conforming to 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 such content because they feel like this person is speaking to them on a very personal level, mm -hmm. and a form of self care that is very close to that is what we call reassurance. Mm -hmm. And reassurance can be done by self, or you can receive it from others. Mm, in my opinion, I feel like. Reassurance when, when you have you are used to reassuring yourself, it becomes easy to get that reassurance from someone else. Because when I am already used to telling myself I'm beautiful, looking myself in the mirror in the morning and I tell myself, Wow, today you look amazing, that dress looks like a dress. And I get to hear it from someone. I want to blow it out of proportion. Their comment would want to blow me off. But rather, I'll feel like it's, it's an addition to what I really know. Yeah. You know. So it won't sweep me off my feet. I won't get obsessed by that person who tells me I look good. Mm. But it will be complementary to what I have already poured into myself. Mm. Uh, so reassurance builds up on a person's esteem. self esteem. Yeah. And uh, that's a good way to build up on, on, on your confidence, even and even spiritually uh, when you talk of spiritual self-care it it is diverse according to what someone considers spiritual i categorize spirituality as a personal spirituality and then how you are relating to your higher self mm -hmm. so uh, when you look at personal spiritualities how do you relate with yourself 
you have time for yourself, time to be alone, to meditate, to think about your life, you know, mm. time alone. Yeah. That con- helps you to connect with your inner self, with your soul. Yeah. You know. Mm. Then when we look at time with your higher power, mm. uh, I'm referring to higher power because of people with different religions and yeah. beliefs. Mm. So someone greater than you, God or, or whatever. You are able to connect with your higher power and have a relationship with your higher self. That adds on to your spiritual aspect because as a human being, there's more to what we see with the eyes. There's more to the spiritual realm that we are not in connection to. And sometimes we need to have that connection for you to be well grounded as a human. Now, when it comes to self-esteem, you know, I never actually looked at it as part of self care. Yeah. How can parents come in when it comes to that? Because I believe most of the time we are brought up in an environment whereby nobody ever told you you look good when you were growing up. Nobody ever told you, I love the way you look, or I love the dress you're wearing. So you come here in a relationship and boom, you find this man who tells you you're gorgeous, you look good. And everything is blown out of proportion yeah. and boom, you're in there. Yeah. You didn't check in it. Yeah. What did you tell the parents? Um, being a parent, and I, I think it's a big challenge we are currently having in our society because when you look at the rate of mental health in teenagers, mm-hmm. our teenagers are slowly sinking into mental health issues because of the issues that are back and forth. When a parent gets a child. I can say for the first year of bearing this child, mm-hmm. the child is living on your thumb. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. But you see, the child, when they start realizing that there is a world beyond my mom, there's a world beyond breast milk, there's a world beyond this space I've been with for the past one year, yeah. they start developing something we call authenticity. Mm-hmm. Now, most of our parents, they have a hard time embracing how different their child is. Mm-hmm. Because their personality starts coming up at that point. Mm-hmm. We have a problem with embracing how this child is. Because maybe they are not coming up the way we had imagined. This child is not doing things the way I want them to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it becomes frustrating because we want to puppeteer the child. Mm-hmm. And that cut them short of being who they need to be. So I can say the first thing for parents is embrace your child as they are and be with them every step as they are growing because that will help you to know what am I embracing. Mm. So your child likes singing. Mm. Maybe the voice is not yet good, but there's a way you can encourage this child to sing. Yeah. Yeah. You can encourage them, take them to classes. Very true. Uh, help them to join the church choir, choir or something. Mm-hmm. You can nurture that child that way. Encourage them in the things that you want them to be. Yeah. And if that's not the line the child wants to go, you know, respect is to me. Mm-hmm. You are allowed to respect your child. Mm-hmm. You can respect the choices that they have made and ask them, okay, what then do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Of course, that will be a child who's at least five years, they are able to at least choose what they want to do. But between two years to four years, it's about learning how can I this child and what can I empower them? Yeah, how can I empower them? Very true. Now, when it comes to parenting, because uh, I think I was that I was at a moment where I was brought up in a place whereby even if I dress so well, nobody tells me you look good. You know, nobody tells me you're beautiful. Nobody tells me you know all those things. So you bump into a university and that is where you get this guy who tells you you're yeah. doing good. Yeah. <laughs> what should a parent do when they're bringing up these daughters and they're bringing up these sons? Because now we are seeing that whole issue of high capital and all that. Yes. Now that one is happening to the boy child. Yes. So how should the two be handled yes. as they're growing up? So when you find someone obsessed with uh, such compliments of just taken away with such compliments, it means that a certain need was not met, mm-hmm. either at childhood or even in adulthood. Mm-hmm. This person might not have been appreciated. They were not seen. 
So when someone comes out and points something about them or gives them that attention that they have been craving for, they feel seen. Mm -hmm. They feel appreciated. Yeah. As parents, we need to appreciate our children even when they are growing up. You know, sometimes a child can do something that will annoy you, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the intentions were pure. Mm -hmm. For example, your child, maybe a, a, an eight-year-old doesn't know how to do laundry, yeah. but they can decide that, mommy is tired, let me try and help mommy do laundry. Mm -hmm. And they do it all wrong because they don't know how. Yeah. Instead of beating up this child, you can tell them you have done well. Mm -hmm. But let me teach you how to do it. Next time today, let me teach you. Next time, let's do it together so that we can teach you. So you have not put this child down and made them feel bad for trying their best. But rather, you have encouraged them to be kind because they are trying to be kind to you. Yeah. You have encouraged them to help people when when they feel that the person is not well. With our boys, uh, I feel like we have a society. The African society has expectations that a man needs to be a man. Yeah. A man should not cry. Mm -hmm. A man <laughs> should not show you emotions. You should not even compliment a man. Sura <laughs> yaki na sura ya mawe, sura ya ngumu. You know? Which is quite strong. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a way that you can compliment even your, your child as they are growing up. Mm -hmm. Start with the little things. You are potty training the child. Encourage that child. To do for tea. You, you're, you're, you're done, they're, they're done going for tea. Dance with them and tell them, you, you have done the for tea, you have done the for tea. And that will encourage the child to do more Better. positive things. And the child has learned how to write. Yeah. Buy them maybe a, a pen set that they had wanted or that a schoolmate has. Mm. That will encourage them, they feel appreciated. Uh, your child is doing good in school, tell them next time you perform the same, I'm going to get you on to pay. Yeah. Something that maybe will encourage the women to do better. Mm -hmm. That way we will raise white children who are already empowered. We have a society that has already empowered the girl child in the possible and we've been complaining that the boy child is being forgotten. Yeah. But when you encourage your child it starts at a personal level, at a home level. Mm -hmm. When you encourage your child at still a young age, even with the tiny things, you know, as a human being, I'm like, as a grown up, going to the loo is just natural, right? Yeah, yeah. But for a child, that's a milestone. Mm -hmm. And you have, when you have encouraged that milestone, it becomes a source of pride for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when a boy grows up and even they learn to encourage themselves you know as a parent you will do so much for them mm. but then you'll be reminded you know the voice at the back of your head when you are grown is the voice of your parent yeah. or the voice of a person in authority the voice of your teacher yeah the one that either helped you propel propel us. ahead or that one who really put you down yeah. And like, wow, I have a very good story on that because we had a <laughs> physics teacher. Yeah. I will never forget. So that physics teacher used to bring us papers. So when he brings the papers, he would announce from the highest to the lowest. And from the highest is 96, blah, blah, blah. And he gets to 50. Alafu akifika 50 anasema, from 50 and below. Awa ni watu wale, vichwa zao zimeja makaratasi, e zimeja match. Uh -huh. And believe you me, I did not read physics at all. And I could just class. I'm yes. just busy doing my own things. Yes. I'm not even interested. Yes. 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 Uh, something about this girl or this boy who is already has not been brought up in an environment whereby he has his self-esteem up there. You are talking something about talking to yourself. Maybe you can elaborate more. How can they build up that self-esteem, build up their self-love to themselves? So, uh, you know, self-esteem comes from motivation, right? Because, for example, if 
your parent tells you you're good at something, mm -hmm. you feel motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. But there are two types of motivation. Mm -hmm. There is intrinsic motivation, mm -hmm. it comes from within. Mm -hmm. And there is extrinsic, which now comes from everyone else around. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a person should first nurture the, the inside, yeah? Mm -hmm. The intrinsic motivation first. Mm -hmm. The intrinsic thoughts, mm -hmm. the intrinsic, you know, everything yeah. that you will hear from anyone else, mm -hmm. you have to nurture it within first. Mm -hmm. You have to nurture your, your, your beauty from within. Everyone has their own beauty. You have to nurture your confidence from within. You have to nurture that thought that I'm capable to do this. And uh, with that, you have to also be very self-aware. You have to be very self-aware. Uh, when you're self-aware, it means that you will love the good things about you. You will understand the bad things about you and you will know what can be changed, sure. So with that, a person is able to build on their esteem very nicely. Because if I know that, you know, this is my good side on the camera, I would likely not sit on this side yes. of the chair, right? Yes. <laughs> so, I will project what I feel is best about me. And what I feel is not so good, will be overpowered by what is good. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So that is what I will project to people. Mm. And what I feel that can be worked on, of course I might not be able to work on this side of my face, yeah. <laughs> but I can be able to work on how I've accepted that. Mm -hmm. You know, one side is good is, is better than the other. Yeah. That acceptance of the things that I cannot be able to change builds up my confidence so that even if someone comes along and tells me there is this thing about you that is not good, it won't bother me so much. I mean, I was aware. Yeah, I was aware of that. But if someone tells me about something negative about me, that I had, I wasn't really agreeable about it, mm -hmm. I had not come to acceptance about it, it will bring me down. Now, looking at the kind of uh, social media, platforms we have nowadays and there's so much that moves on the social media be it either it's body shaming you know body loads this is how you should look what would you advise when it comes to self care on such kind of information uh, not all information in the social media platform are for your consumption not everything is for you so you have to be very selective on what you give your attention to. Use the things that you feel promote you. Go to the platforms that you feel build you. If you are looking into businesses, look for those platforms that talk about businesses. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to uh, self-awareness, look at platforms that talk about self-awareness. So first of all, assess your need. And remind yourself that you don't have to Watch every video that pops up. Mm -hmm. Some videos are not there to be watched. Yeah. And the moment you feel like something is, uh, that's where spiritual, uh, the spiritual self care comes in. When you are very spiritually connected with yourself, you will be able to identify something that doesn't go well with your spirit. So it, you scroll on a video and it just makes your spirit so unsettled. And you know that this thing, Scroll away from that video. Should we relate self care with, uh, I don't know, sometimes I look at uh, when I look at social media and guys are going out, hanging out. Of course, it's fun, it's good to go out, but you know, I'm here with my black label you know, <laughs> and I'm showing guys here, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm out here yeah. with this black label and I'm uh, smoking this big, you know. What is self care? What do you think about? What do they look at when it comes to that kind of self care? So you have to understand first, self care is about you. It's about you. what are you trying to get when you go out? What are you trying to achieve? What part of yourself, the social, emotional, spiritual, or emotional aspect of self, are you trying to 
which mm. now we share. Which aspect are you trying to build? So if it's going out, are you trying to achieve social interaction with other people? Well and good. Then why is there the necessity to post it? What are you trying to build? Which aspect of you are you trying to build? If you feel emotionally good, drifted when people ask you, hey, you call me happy. Oh my God, you guys are having fun and it builds you up emotionally. Uh, that's your go emotional ahead. nourishment then. <laughs> go ahead and do it. But when you do it for the wrong reasons, it instead will break down a certain aspect of yourself. If you have posted for the purpose of and you have your status viewer uh, right there for our WhatsApp, you are just waiting for that person to pop up. So, to pop up and tell yourself, ah, I'm your owner. Oh, you're targeting. There's a target. <laughs> I'm your owner. Mm. I just keep a letter. Mm. That will be on a negative because what happens to this person doesn't see it. Yeah. It will be a downer for you. Mm. So, all that hype that you're going to get. What do you mean by emotional self-care? Uh, emotional self-care, it's emotional, it's, it's about how you feel and the thoughts that you encourage, uh, the thoughts that you harness in your mind. I, I like using the reference of a seed when I'm talking about a thought. Mm -hmm. uh, a thought is like a seed. When you plant a positive thought inside your mind, it usually grows into a tree mm -hmm. and fruits and it's th those fruits bear more seeds yeah. so that they can grow so there's that cycle a good thought brings about more good thoughts and uh, a negative thought does the same thing yeah. so when a person harnesses a negative thought mm -hmm. it creates more and more negative thoughts yeah. So uh, maybe for example, a person emotionally they feel unaccepted in the in the place that they are in. Maybe let's say in the, in the workplace, uh, they feel unappreciated in the workplace. So that creates a thought about self. Mm. Why is that person not appreciating me? Yeah. Maybe my supervisor is not appreciating me because I'm not beautiful like someone else who's appreciated. Mm. Maybe they don't appreciate me because I'm not on his tribe. He doesn't appreciate me because sometimes we even relate relate them to something that is so unpractical for that situation. So maybe they, they don't like me because my parents did not like me. Mm -hmm. And now that creates a cycle of so many thoughts and do you know that your thoughts make you more aware of even your environment. Mm -hmm. So if you pass by a marketplace and even a madman says, Oh no you You'll think to yourself, oh my yeah, god, Charlie also he, knows. he knows, <laughs> he, he also doesn't like me. <laughs> so it brews a lot. Mm -hmm. There is a book called The Secret mm -hmm. uh, and it shows exactly what happens when we think some thoughts, they actually do manifest even in our world. Mm -hmm. And the good evidence of that is, if one day you're working in a busy town, and you're thinking about the color red. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you'll see it mm -hmm. You'll see that red color there, and there it is, and this one is wearing a red dress, and this one is wearing a red shoe, because the mind knows how to connect. Mm -hmm. It knows how to grow things. Mm -hmm. a good, another good example is if you walk in town, and maybe you've been thinking about pregnancy, yeah. you'll see pregnant women left, right, and center. <laughs> There'll be a pregnant woman there where you're sitting in the cafeteria, there'll be a pregnant woman. So our mind connects, it draws connection, and all that starts with a single thought. Uh, so when it comes to emotional self-care, you learn to nurture positive thoughts. And we have talked about things that people tell us that sometimes affect our thoughts. Yeah. You need to learn, there's something called thought reprocessing that we do in therapy. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to process your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And even from a negative, uh, maybe outward output, you can derive a positive thought from it. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, when it comes to that, I, I usually say it's good to also have that part of affirmations. 
so that your mind is thinking the right thing. And of course, whether it's the Quran or the Bible, it also tells us the same. That those thoughts that are pure, those thoughts that are beautiful, those thoughts that are praiseworthy, let that be what you are actually meditating on. Now, coming to that, what we talk, we, we hear people say mindfulness. What exactly is involved in mindfulness? Mindfulness is about being in the here and now. It's just that. Mm-hmm. Uh, concentrating on the present moment and that alone. And mindfulness especially works best for people who are dealing with a lot of anxiety. If you're finding yourself constantly worrying and you practice mindfulness, you concentrate on being in that, in your moment. So if you're worried about something that is going to happen in the future, mindfulness helps you to block that and concentrate on your moment at that moment. Where am I right now? Yeah. What is happening in my life? You concentrate on that. If you're worried about something that happened in the past, maybe something embarrassing, it cuts on that and you're able to concentrate on the moment that you How can we relate our physical health with our mental health? <clears throat> so, uh, we talked a little bit about food to eat or what you eat. Um, Nutritionally, when you have figured out the healthy way to maintain your body as far as food is concerned, mm-hmm. it caters for part of the physical wellness. Mm-hmm. But then, what you eat also needs to be converted into useful uh, matter inside the body, right? So, what you do with that energy, with those fats that you take in, with those carbohydrates that you take in, is so important. And that's where physical activity comes in. I'm not calling it exercise because not everybody is built for the gym. Not everybody is built for yoga. Physical activity. Physical activity is basically keeping your body in motion. You know, if uh, you are used to stay in the office behind the monitor, typing, 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 you take a moment to stretch even if it's for two minutes just in your office space and you go back to sitting mm-hmm. that's physical activity because you have kept your body in motion mm-hmm. if you decide that at least twice in a week i'll be taking i will be trekking to work and back home mm-hmm. instead of driving that is physical activity right there nice now we are talking of going for <clears throat> family holidays family vacations or maybe you just want to take yourself for a vacation where do we place all this in? Is it back in self care or what do we talk about? Uh, going out will depend on an individual if, if uh, that is your way of relaxing or if that is your way of relieving your stress or uh, a way of uh, encountering your day or your week or your year. Mm-hmm. So it is a good way to relax because especially when you pick a place with nature like the environment we are in right now, it's a really calm environment and if you have decided to take some quiet uh, quietude time, which is time alone, if you are coming here for quietude, it means that you will be having sound, there, there are no distractions really, you, you'll be having sounds of nature, the wind, the fresh breeze with trees, there are no interruption with the things you do. So it depends with a person and what they would prefer. Mm-hmm. If you are an outgoing person, you can go hiking with friends or you can go ziplining, you know. It's, a, it's also part of physical activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people, maybe the introverts, might prefer staycation mm-hmm. <laughs> where they just have a change of environment. Yeah. Away from your house, away from trying to figure out Nina Kula Nini Leo, mm. away from that hustle of routine yeah. to a place where you're just able to stay, not worry about those tiny little details of your day. And yeah, that is really nice. Now, I'm just looking at this person who has a very busy schedule. Yeah. I wake up at six and have to be out. I mean, go to work at six, come back at six, the whole day is tiring. I'm clogged up, I'm feeling 
tired. In fact, by the time I come from evening, I don't want to talk to anyone. I am just mad. What are some of self-care practices should such a person have in order for them to enjoy uh, time out with family? I mean, time with family in the evening or something like that. Because I imagine there are families who, when you come back home, it's like you're throwing away everyone. Because you're really tired, you don't want to talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. What are some of the self-care practices should that someone bring on board so that we have a good social environment at home? Mm -hmm. well, there's a little activity I like doing with, uh, even with my colleagues where we try and uh, section the hours of the day. And for most of them, they don't figure out where some of the hours go. Mm -hmm. So, the, the day has 24 hours, yeah. right? Eight hours guaranteed for sleep. We recommend sleep for at least eight hours. <laughs> if you cannot get the eight hours mark, six hours should be the least. So six to eight hours, we put it to sleep. But uh, we, we put eight hours just for easier section. Mm. So eight hours to sleep. Uh, most of us work nine to five jobs or eight to five which is basically around eight hours <coughs> so eight hours goes to work mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. how many hours do you have in mm -hmm. eight. Yeah. Yeah. eight eight more we have eight more mm -hmm. you see you're one of the four who lose hours <laughs> <laughs> we have eight okay, more hours. actually sleep four hours <laughs> <laughs> so this eight hours that do remain mm -hmm. and what you should uh, section out for self, mm. section out for your spiritual life, mm -hmm. section out for social and family. Mm -hmm. social and family together because you are out with other people about yourself. Yeah. So, ideally, God gave us enough time in a day mm -hmm. to cover for all the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. We need to work, we need to sleep. We need time with self, we need time with others, we yeah. need time with God. Very true. So those eight hours mm -hmm. should cover and accommodate for all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires a lot of discipline mm -hmm. and a lot of work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Balancing your work, not taking work home, and not bringing home to work. Because yeah. what happens when you bring home to work? You are likely to rest on the eight hours of work. Probably airing out your grievances about home mm -hmm. to work with. Mm -hmm. That means you'll have less hours for work. Mm -hmm. So you'll try to accommodate for the less hours of work by working overtime, mm -hmm. which is on family time. So once the time management has been messed up, it means you'll be eating on other aspects of it. Very true. I think that was a good insightful session. Uh, maybe we have our parting shot from our guests. Uh, what to do to tell that young girl out there that is on social media and feels like I'm not yet there. Missy Nanyash, you know, what do you tell them? Uh, love yourself. Everything starts with the moment you have understood who you are, you have understood those parts of yourself that you're not even happy about. You learn to accept yourself as you are and self-love starts there. And self is the basis of even the self-care we are talking about. Because the moment you don't love yourself, you will not dress good. The moment you do not love yourself, you will not buy things for yourself. The moment you don't love yourself, you will not find essence in, in even baking, taking a shower. So it all starts with self. And when you try and break self-care, it's a basic thing. It's, it's the things that we do require to do on a daily basis. Shower, eat, dress nice, go out, know people, socialize, work, and repeat. That's basically it. And doing all those things was perfectly said. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you in the next episode.